Okay, in this video we are going to be talking more about masks. We've already looked at masks a little bit when we did the quick mask when making selections, and we talked about it a tiny bit when talking about layers, but now we're going to learn a little more uh, detail about this very powerful tool. Now, first of all, understand that anything that can make a selection can be used to make a mask. So you saw that when I made a selection last time and then placed that as a mask on a solid green surface that I did in the layers video. But anything that we make can make a selection with, we can use as a mask. A mask is a lot like a stencil. We're basically telling the computer what we want to be able to show through it and what we don't want to be able to show through it. So think of it like a stencil. The reason we use layer masks instead of erasing or altering directly on the image is because they're non-destructive. So again, that's going to be a big key point in working with Photoshop in a smart way, is to not destroy your original Im image. So let's talk about masks. I'm going to do just kind of a simple vignette, a handmade vignette to show you on this one. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to create a new layer. And then on this new layer, I'm going to go to my paint bucket tool and I am going to fill this black. Okay. Now, I want to turn this into a mask. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to click the button that says layer mask, right? That added this mask right here. So I've got my, in, my icon of my layer on the left and then I've got the mask icon on the right. Now when I've selected the mask icon, so it's already selected, you can see the white brackets around it. When that's selected, I am now working with the mask, not with the layer itself. Now with the mask, black gets rid of, it hides the pixels, and white reveals the pixels, okay? So I've got all these black pixels all over everything here. So I'm going to go to my brush tool, and I'm going to click X so that my black is in the front, and you'll see as I paint, that reveals the image underneath it because, again, black hides the pixels. Now, if I were to click X, white reveals the pixels, so I can paint that mask back on there again, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of, let's make this nice and big. And we will just use this to reveal. Now I'm doing this with a soft brush, so that's why it's got kind of that soft edge around it, right? So let's say that instead of doing it with a soft brush, let's step back. And let's go to this marquee selection tool there. We'll grab that selection. And we'll fill that selection with, with black, okay? So I just made a perfect circle of black, but I was working with the mask, so what that did was just reveal what was underneath it, right? Now, <clears throat> I want to soften up these edges, and I can do that with what's called feathering. Feathering is the safest way to soften edges like that. If I double click on the mask icon here, I open up the mask properties up here. So I can see the density, I can adjust the edge, and we'll talk more about that in a minute, and I see a little preview of it. I'm going to adjust this feather up quite a bit. And you'll see that that feathering softens that edge. And I can just adjust however much I want that feathering to be adjusted. And it's nice and soft. And you can see now that that looks more like a photo vignette. Right? Just handmade, hand done with a mask. I can hide this, and I'm right back to my original image, show it, and it puts that, that mask on it with that feathered effect around the outside of it. Now, just like how I was able to invert a uh, invert a selection, I can also invert a mask, okay? So even if I've already masked it, I can invert this. All I need to do, uh, well one, I can double click on the mask properties and there's an invert button right there, okay? And if I click on that, you'll see it switches it so now that the mask is reversed, where the middle is the mask. The keyboard shortcut for inverting a mask is Command-I on a PC, or sorry, on a Mac, so I can do Command-I and you'll see it switches that, or it's Control-I on a Windows computer. So either going into the mask properties and clicking the invert button, or using that Command-I or Control-I uh, keyboard shortcut 
will invert your mask for you. Another thing to know about working with masks, if I go into my mask properties here, there's a little button that looks kind of like a diamond with an arrow pointing down on it. That stands for apply mask. I also see that option if I right click on the mask itself, apply layer mask. What you're actually doing if you apply the layer mask is you're deleting the mask. You actually make it, and we'll go ahead and do that, you make that mask a part of the actual layer. So if I was doing this right on the image, then it would have burned that into the image instead of burned it into this layer. So that is destructive. It's destructive to your layer to apply the mask. So you need to be careful and only apply the mask if it's something that you uh, are certain that you, that you don't mind destroying the layer. In this case, I don't mind applying the mask because it's just on that black uh, background, so it's not gonna cause any issues. Now another, thing that you can do with masks. I'm going to go ahead and just make another layer here and uh, we'll mask that. If you right click on the mask, you've got a thing that says to disable the layer mask. Disabling the layer mask just basically turns it off. It doesn't delete it. You can go back in and, and this option will then say enable, enable uh, layer mask but that allows you to basically temporarily turn the mask off and, and then turn it back on again without having to delete it and then redo it again. Now, one other type of mask that we can work with is called a clipping mask. And a clipping mask is actually really handy when working with text. If I wanna put a particular uh, image in the text itself. So I'm gonna delete this layer here and delete this layer here. And I'm going to make a copy of this layer. And now I'm gonna make a new layer and I can drag my layers up and down just by clicking and dragging them and I need this layer under the image. So I don't wanna do it under my original because I don't wanna mess with the original, but I've put it under this copy, okay? Now in this layer, I'm gonna work with text. So I'm gonna come over to my type tool and we'll be doing a whole video on type, but for now I'm gonna just click that T there. And I'm gonna hide these layers so that I can see better what I'm doing. And with that type, I am just going to type something like, we'll just do all caps, Thanksgiving. Now that is tiny, let's go ahead and make this huge. And let's make it a much thicker type so we can see it better when we get the image on there. All right, so now I have my type and my image. And all I need to do to make a clipping mask is I can just option click on the line between the layers. So I just hold down Option or Alt on a PC, and you can see my mouse turns into like this white square with a, a little arrow pointing down. And when I click on that, you'll see that it created a clipping mask, where now you can see the image through the text. Another way that I could have made a clipping mask is to right click on the image on top and say Create Clipping Mask. And it basically allows that to just show the image just through the text that's below it. So. Those are some examples of masks in, in Photoshop. We're gonna be doing uh, a lot more with masks as we move through the rest of these, uh, of these videos. But uh, as you can see, it's a fantastic way for us to work with specific parts of our image without destroying the original image uh, and being able to, to uh, just work with what we want to at that time.